welcome to Choose Life. It's me, Pastor Gina Coleman. So I'm looking all spiffy today because I'm going to take some pictures. I have a photo shoot later on, so that's why I look like this. <laughs> Got on my little fancy smancy earrings. Y'all see them? Look at that. And if you don't know, lavender is my favorite color. I'm wearing a lavender dress, kind of faint lavender dress. But um, yeah, we're not here to talk about me. We're here to give God glory. But I wanted to let you know why, why I am looking a little cute today. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and pray. Father, we love you. We adore you. We thank you, Lord God Almighty. We honor you, God. You are wonderful. You are great. You are awesome, Lord God. We thank you so much for your goodness. We thank you how faithful you are because you're faithful to us, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, because nothing, no weapon formed against us will ever prosper because that is the promise that you have made unto us. This morning, God, we rise and we shine, Lord God. We give you the glory, God, but we also rise and shine, Father, because the light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon us. So this morning, Lord God, I thank you, I praise you, and I magnify you. I commit this time into your hand and the viewers and the watchers, uh, listeners rather, into your hand. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. All right. So, um, yeah, let's just go ahead and get into the video. But on the side, I have my lavender and chamomile candle burning just to bring some fragrance. And across the room, I have lemon and I think that's rosemary in my diffuser over there burning. So the room, not burning, but bringing off the steam. So the room is nice. Um, I love I just really, really recognize that I love the fall. I mean, I'm excited about candles because it'd be too hot in the, in the winter, I mean, the summer <laughs> to use them. Um, I have a cup of, this is, I think, maple syrup. Um, no, not maple syrup. <laughs> maple pecan coffee with cinnamon in inside. And if you've seen this mug before, it says grace upon grace. Oops. We've seen that before grace upon grace i have that um that right there and as i said i have um some lemon and rosemary mary lemon and rosemary in my diffuser so everything is nice and set and today i'm gonna go out and buy some apple cider does anyone else like apple cider i like warm apple cider with cinnamon and whipped cream on top y'all should try it if you if you like apple cider you should try to Bring it up to the next level. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and pray. Does anyone else like fall? Put it in the comments. Actually, I like all seasons. Um, I do. <laughs> all right. So we are in October. Welcome to October. Welcome to a month of just the leaves falling and they're changing color. It is so beautiful what the Lord does with, with the trees and how they're orange and they're red and I don't know, they're just beautiful. And he leaves, if you ever paid attention, some trees stay green. They don't They don't turn. They stay green if the leaves don't fall off. Not all, but some. So there's an array of colors that the Lord leaves so that we can see. All right, I feel like a little Tammy Faye with these eyelashes. These are different ones but um, that I, than from what I normally wear, but I don't have the other ones. I don't know if I threw them away by mistake or whatever. But anyway, I need them for pictures. All right, so... This is where I'm at. Okay, so inside of the book, it has this little, I'm not sure what this page is called, but I'm going to read that. It says um, about October. It says, likewise, the spirit help us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray as we ought, but the spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words, with groanings too deep for words. He who searches the heart knows what the mind of the spirit is because he intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. And that is Romans 8, 26 and 27. We know that it is the Holy Spirit that intercedes for us with groanings like too deep for words, like he groans for us. Thank you, Lord. All right. So October 1st says this, spirit or flesh. It says, being able to discern spirits require you to have a discerning spirit. Deducing, supposing, 
presuming or otherwise guessing can be a dangerous exercise. Hmm. Many times what you think is a spirit is merely the flesh. Be cautious not to get out of balance in the spiritual realm. The flesh is at enemy with me. I war against the flesh. Often when you are facing often what you are facing is not spirit but someone's carnal nature. Hmm. Rising up against you. The person's actions may or may not be um, motivated. A person's actions may or may not be motivated by spirit. Ask me. Wow. So the Lord is really trying to help us to discern between the difference between the flesh and the spirit. And I like this um, because um, I was just listening to a message yesterday by some friends of mine. They were talking about that everything is not a spirit. And truly, everything is not a spirit. Sometimes it's people's flesh just acting up, just doing whatever they want or doing whatever we want to do in our flesh. And the Holy Spirit says sometimes what we deem as that's a demonic spirit is sometimes it's just the flesh of a person just doing whatever is one more, more than likely uh, moving in rebellion against God. And so he said he wants us to ask him the difference. And for real, that'll save us a whole bunch of trouble if we ask like, God, is this this person's flesh or this is spirit? Because if it's a spirit, we're going to be able to do something about it. We're able to bind it and cast it out. But if it's the flesh, we're going to have to pray. You can't like just go up to people and slap me like, get yourself together. You can't do that. <laughs> but if it's a spirit, we have authority over it. But we do not have a authority over someone's flesh. People have, and we all have uh, been given a free will to do whatever it is that we want to do. Now, hopefully we are yielding our free will um, to the Lord and trying to uh, work in the uh, in in the word and with God so our flesh can line up and yield to the Lord, right? Because that's what the word is supposed to do. The word is supposed to um, divide the soul and spirit asunder. So this is in the soulish realm where we usually cut up. That's the part that need to be saved. Our souls, right, need to be saved and need to have some things evicted out of it. So sometimes like when people do stuff or even we do stuff or have done stuff, it wasn't um, demonic uh, oppression or uh, demonic activity. It was just somebody's flesh acting out. You know, I, I, I do believe a lot of times people are rebellious. They're just plain old rebellious and it's not a spirit of rebellion. It is rebellion. They just, I'm doing whatever I want to do. So we must ask the Holy Spirit, what's the difference? Is it, is it their flesh or is it um, a spirit? All right. And he said, just simply ask us, right? Ask him, not us. <laughs> it says the person's actions may or may not be motivated by a spirit. Now, I do believe in deliverance because the word says that these signs shall follow them that believe they shall cast out demons in the name of the Lord. But I also believe that people's flesh do what everyone. Sometimes it looks like one and the same. The flesh can um, be so outrageous and outrate and, and just doing whatever it wants. It looks like it's a spirit. But the Holy Spirit says to ask him and he will um, tell us the, uh, the difference. And, and I believe he'll tell us what to do when we ask him what's happening in, in people around us. All right. He said, be cautious not to get out of balance in the spirit realm. And that is true. We have to be careful, especially those, well, everybody is really called to do deliverance, but there are some people that God has specifically given that assignment. And the reason why I say everybody is, is because the scripture just says, these signs shall follow them that believe. We're all believers. So we're all supposed to be able to cast out demons, lay hands on the sick. We're all supposed to be able to do that. But then there are some people that the Lord has put a mark on them and said, um, he wants them specifically to be uh, a deliverance minister. I happen to be one of those people that the Lord said he wanted me to um, help set his people free. Um, I've done deliverance in the past. I'm looking forward to doing deliverance in the future because if God said people um, have demons and different spirits and oppression and depression, then God, I, I agree with God and we need to be set free from it. Right. So um, he said, but don't get out of balance. And so I was going to say that um, people such as myself, we cannot get out of balance because we just so we just want to get them demons out of people, off of people. We want to get those spirits away from people, but we can get unbalanced. Just like a person that's a prophet, they could prophet want to prophesy everything. Everything is a prophetic word. That's not true. So God likes us to have everything 
balance. So not just um, not getting out of balance in, in the spirit realm. I just want to insert this part, but we can't get out of balance in and um, I'm a prophesy, I'm a prophesy, I'm a prophesy, I'm a prophesy, I'm a release the word. We can't do that either, right? So whatever it is that we're called to do, we need to make sure that we're balanced in it. Study, get all the information, but also in the end, ask God, is, is this a spirit or is this, this the flesh? Ask the Lord, am I supposed to release a prophetic word or am I supposed to hold it, right? Because sometimes even, and I know I'm going off a little bit, sometimes what people call... um. The prophetic word is not a prophetic word. A prophetic word should be foretelling of something to come, right? And a lot of people say, I'm going to release a prophetic word. You know, you see on social media, I don't know who this is for, but God, some, something. I don't really, you know, like those generic pro prophecies. I don't like those generic prophecies because the Lord is strategic in making sure that we, his sons and daughters, get um, exactly what we're supposed to get. He's not just throwing it all out. If it's in a particular setting, for sure, yes, he's going to do it. And, and all everybody that's in that room, that's who it's for. But these social media uh, people that say, you know, they're going to they're gonna release a word. I, I'm sorry, y'all. I don't like that. <laughs> Because anybody is doing it now and everybody is doing it. So I'm just talking about balance. That's all I'm talking about is balance, being balanced. And if you do deliverance, we must be balanced. God said in this in the word this morning, be balanced in the spirit realm. We can't like, oh, they got a demon. <laughs> sometimes you're right, but sometimes we're wrong. All right. So he said for us to be cautious, be careful and not to get out of balance, right? He said, the, but, but the flesh is enmity against God. The flesh wars against the Holy Spirit. Our flesh wars against the Holy Spirit. Our flesh does not want to get in agreement with the Holy Spirit, but we need to yield in our flesh and let the uh, flesh submit and get in agreement with the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is our helper and he's going to help us overcome some of these fleshly carnal ways or all of them if we yield to him, right? He said the flesh is enmity. The flesh is at war with him. He said, I war against the flesh. The Holy Spirit wars against our flesh, right? He said, often what you're facing is not spirit, but someone's carnal nature rising up against you. So that he's saying that it's not always spirit. It's just somebody being carnal. That's the bottom line. That's what the Lord said. They're just being carnal or have not yet um, been delivered or been set free or have changed in that area where they're carnal. Now, this is making a whole bunch of sense to me. Not that it wouldn't, but... This is just making me think of some things and some people right now. It's not a spirit. They're just being carnal. They have not yet yielded to the Holy Spirit or applied the word of God in that area. Right? That's all. And that's why the flesh um, wars against the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit said, I war against the flesh. I'm trying to get this flesh to line up. But sometimes the flesh just doesn't want to do what the Holy Spirit wants it to do. I'm going to take a little bit of a uh, sip of coffee here. That is delicious. And if you if you drink coffee, you should add some cinnamon every now and then to your coffee. It's so delicious. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and get into the first scripture. The first scripture is 1 John 4, 1. And I have my um, NIV Bible with me today. So 1 John 4, 1 says this. Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirit to see whether they are from God. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. So he's saying, well, one, it started off saying that we need discernment. We need to, we need to know how to discern spirits. We need discernment. And, and I remember like early on in my walk, everybody was discerning this. I, I discern this and I discern that, but that wasn't really true. <laughs> we was just trying out. Or they were, because I've never been that type of person saying, well, I discern that. I've just never been that type of person. I, if I do discern something, maybe off, I ask someone else, are, are they feeling the same thing? And someone that I can trust and someone that's not just saying, well, yeah, they like that. No. All right. And we may have been off too. We may have been off and thinking that it was a spear when it actually was the person's flesh acting up. Actually, you really kind of... Um, Sometimes, sometimes you can really see a spirit in a person's face and in their behavior, right? You can see the difference. But the Holy Spirit said, 
be careful because even sometimes <laughs> with people's faces, it can, it won't uh, be a spirit, but it'll be their flesh just rising up, just making ugly faces, doing <laughs> whatever it wants. So he says, but we must try. It's, it's, and I believe in the King James, it says to try. It says, dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but try the spirit in King James to see whether they are from God. Try the spirit to see it's from, from God. And how you can try the spirit is ask the Holy Spirit. That's how you try. Holy Spirit, what is this that I am seeing? Because it doesn't matter how spiritually mature we are, how long we've been in the Lord, we can all miss it, right? And so that's why he said, ask me. Just ask me. I'm going to tell you if this is the spirit and I'm going to tell you if it's the flesh. Because as I said, if it's, a, if it's a spirit, we have dominion over demonic forces. We have been given authority and power to cast them out. But over somebody's flesh, we have nothing. What we can do is back down and pray. God, ask God to help them. Hey, God, ask God to minister to them. All right, that's what we can do with somebody's flesh. All right, so the next thing is um, 1 Corinthians 12, 7 through 11. 1 Corinthians 12, 7 through 11. So did y'all read um, those scriptures that I gave you yesterday to read? Did you read them? <laughs> All right, 1 Corinthians 12, verses 7 through 11. All right, it says, now to each one of... Now to each one of the manifestation of the spirit is given to the common good for the common good to one. There is now to each one, the manifestation of the spirit is given for the common good to one. There is given through the spirit, a message of wisdom to another, a message of knowledge by the means of the same spirit to another faith by the same spirit to another gifts of healing by that one spirit to another miracle, miraculous powers rather, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing or discerning between spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues and still to another, the interpretation of tongues. So what the, the, um, the core of this particular scripture is verse 10. I'm not sure why she put all under there, but it says to another miraculous powers, to another prophecies, to another discerning between spirits or discerning of spirits. So it's a gift to be able to discern um, the, the different spirits. And we can ask God, can, can you bless us with that gift? Because we don't want to accuse people of having um, or being in the flesh when they actually need help and being delivered. Thank you, Lord. So what the Holy Spirit is saying is just ask him because we don't want to accuse people of being in the flesh when they actually having some uh, issues with uh, demonic forces oppressing them. So we want to be able to know if, if this is really a demon God, because now I need to exercise authority. But if it's just the flesh, now I need to pray. Now I need to pray. So we want to ask the Holy Spirit because he's He's uh, very precise. He knows what he's doing. He sees everything in every last one of us. So we want to ask him so we'll know how to handle people and people will know how to handle us. All right. Hopefully if we've been saved for some time, we're not too carnal. We should be moving away from carnality. All right. Daily, as much as possible, we should be moving away from carnality. But that doesn't mean we won't have um a moment of moving in in the flesh all right and the last scripture is first thessalonians 5 21 first thessalonians 5 21 hope y'all get it we were just needing to ask the lord um what it is that we see uh manifesting in front of us is it the flesh or is this a spirit all right all right, 1 Thessalonians 5, 21 says this. I'm going to read 19 and 20 so it can all come together. It says, do not quench the spirit, meaning the Holy Spirit. Do not treat prophecies with contempt, meaning disrespect, but test them all. Hold on to what is good. Hold on to what is good. And I'm going to read 22, reject what is evil. But verse 21 is our verse that says, but test them all. So once again, the Lord is saying unto us, um, test them all. And as in this particular verse, it's talking about 
testing the prophetic words that you get. Now, this is to me is one of the greatest mistakes that the people have made in the body of Christ. Say if um, someone prophesied something to me, actually someone did prophesy something wrong to me. I knew it wasn't for me. I absolutely knew it, knew it was not for me. So many, many, many years ago, um, I used to work in a children's ministry and there was an appropriate dress um, to wear, like, you know, attire to wear. And so back then it was a, a long top and tights because I was working with babies and I had to crawl down on the floor. Well, um, with them. So a prophet came in and she said to me, <laughs> she said, dress better when you come to the house of the Lord. And it was like a mix in all this other prophetic word. So, um, I received the first part of the prophetic word, but the second part I didn't receive when she said to me, dress better. I clearly said to God, God, I know she's not talking to me because you already know how I dress. So God would not tell me how to dress coming to the house of the Lord because he already knows I had on appropriate clothes. The, the shirt was long enough and everything. But what I said to God is if you have to speak that to me, so some other else some others can hear how to dress then I'll, I'll stand here and I'll take it. So I took the first part of the prophecy and I rejected the second part of the prophecy because I knew that, that, um, I knew how to dress coming to God's house. I, I, back in the day I used to, I don't do it anymore, but I used to put my clothes on the night before practice dancing in them to see if they were too short and all kinds of things. So I knew that she wasn't talking to me. So what happened was I tested the spirit and I immediately, I knew that that wasn't for me. Not that part. The first part was definitely for me, but that part wasn't for me. And so what, what, what I did was I didn't judge the prophet. I judged the word. And so that's why I'm saying this is a great mistake that people do. Sometimes they judge the prophet, but they, and, and, and they, uh, maybe a prophet may give a, um, a word, maybe they may miss it, right? And they judge the prophet instead of the word. And then they begin to call the people false prophets. No, that's not it. She missed it for me. <laughs> she just missed it. And um, people miss it, right? People miss it in the prophetic. We miss it in the preaching. We miss it because no one is perfect except for the Lord. So I just want to encourage you that if you receive a prophetic word, um, from someone don't judge the person because at no point, no point, no point does God ever gives us a leeway to judge a prophet. Never, ever, ever. Whether the word is true, whether the word is not true. I mean, you know, we do it and say that's an accurate prophet, but that's still a judgment, right? Um, even if the word comes true in the, the next moment, that's still, we're still putting our stamp of approval, but then the, the prophet comes and he may miss it or she may miss it. And then we just throw that person away. Well, the Bible says that you and I, you and I should not judge another man's servant. So we all belong to God. So once again, we're not supposed to judge anyone, right? And now we have to grow to that place where we realize God told me and you, we have the responsibility to ask the Lord, the Holy Spirit, is this the flesh, right? Because sometimes people stand before you and they prophesy and they're seeing, they're seeing, I was taught this by my spiritual father, they're seeing everything or a lot of things that you have prayed about, but not all of those things is what the Lord wants them to say to you, right? So it's because when you stand before a prophet, your spirit is open it's open so they see some things and 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 they have to be in tune to the lord is this the part i say or not to say right so don't judge the prophet don't judge a prophet, judge the word, judge the word. And, and I said, as we have the responsibility um, twice in here, it said that we need to, to know how to discern spirits. And if we don't know, we need to ask the Holy Spirit, is this a flesh or is this a spirit? Is this you, God, when this person is standing before me? Or is this the carnal part of the person, right? Because we all have the flesh, then, you know, we're still in the flesh, right? And then twice we have the responsibility to test the spirits. The other scripture said, test the spirit and see if they are from God. To just test the test, test the word, not 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 the person, right? Many people have been wounded because they have been judged by the body of Christ because they gave an inaccurate word. If you've ever, I'm telling you, if you've ever had to do something for God, I don't care if it's singing, dancing preaching, serving, like really, and people um, looking at you, you can become so intimidated, so confused because we already know that people are judging us. 
<laughs> so we may not hear um, God all the time. We may not do something accurately all the time, right? That doesn't make people false prophets. It does not. It does not. It does not. A false prophet is someone who has the intent to lie. It's intentional, right? So God has given you and I the responsibility to ask the Holy Spirit, what is this that I'm seeing? Right? Even if you stand before a prophet, ask God to help you be in tune to what he is saying to you in the name of Jesus. And by the way, I love the prophetic. I love the prophetic. I love deliverance. I love it all, right? Because it's God's business. So, but our responsibility once again is ask the Lord to help us, help us to know the difference between the flesh and the a spirit, the flesh and a spirit and the flesh and the spirit, the Holy Spirit. All right. So this is an exciting message to me. I am going to go ahead and pray the prayer here. And remember the title is spirit or flesh, right? It says, I don't want to play guessing games in the spirit. So I need you to show me what you need me to see. We don't want to play guessing games. I'm serious. We do not. We want to be accurate in what we're seeing, accurate in what we're saying. We do. Jesus help us to be accurate. Um, I remember years ago, and I know this is really long today, years ago, someone he was young in, in, in being a prophet and he said something to this woman that damaged her for years. Now, all of us knew that it wasn't true, but in his immaturity, she was damaged for years. Now she's way better now because that was many, many years ago. But that's an example of somebody doing the right thing because he's absolutely a prophet, um, doing the right thing and did not take a moment to discern what he was saying or what he was seeing, if it was correct or not, right? So that we don't want to, I'm reading, I like getting back to the book. We don't want to guess in the spirit. We want to know what we're seeing. Hallelujah. And God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit will give us the grace to know what we're seeing in front of our face so that we can handle it properly. All right. So it says, um, I don't want to play games in the spirit. Um, I want to, let me read this again. I think my eyelashes are like shades, y'all. <laughs> They're like shades to me. When I take them off, I'm like, oh, I can see clearly now. No, I can see clearly, but they feel like shades to me. Anyway, it says, I don't want to play games in the spirit as I need you to show me what you need me to see. Help me to stay in balance with the word of God so that I don't have eyes, so that I don't open my eyes up to deception, right? So we need to be balanced in the spirit so that we don't open our eyes to deception because you, the spirit of deception is a spirit and it wants to come and deceive us that what we're seeing is correct when in actuality, it's not correct. That's what Satan does. He's a liar, a thief, a deceiver. And so we want to stay balanced in the Lord. And it says, um, increase my ability, my ability to discern spirits. So father, we just praise you. We thank you. We love you. God, I thank you for this time of joy and laughter. I hope they was laughing too, Lord God. Um, we ask you, Lord, to help us to discern spirits, Lord God, give us discernment, Lord God, so that we'll be able to properly discern whether it's a spirit or whether the person is in flesh, God. So whether we know we can, uh, be active or we can pray, Lord God, whether we can cast out a spirit, bind up a spirit, or we can pray for a person. So father, I thank you that you're kind, you're teaching us, you're kind, you're good, you're loving, you're teaching us. And I, and again, I pray that the word that we're getting sticks with with us and we hold on to it in the mighty name of Jesus I pray and ask you all these things amen so remember ask the Lord because I'm telling you I'm sure I've done this and be like that's a spirit well when in actuality it was just somebody's carnal flesh acting up right and we prolong let me just say this we prolong the help that the person need if we're saying it's a spirit and it's really flesh or if we're saying it's flesh and it's really spirit right because either way once we find out what it is when the holy spirit speaks to us and tell us what it is then we have some action to take if it's a person's flesh we still have to pray for them right the bible says pray for those that mistreat you that mistreat you if it's a spirit we need to get to work and i'm not saying 
saying you're going to start come out. I'm not saying that. I'm saying you can bind the demon because the only person that really needs to hear it is God. Because remember the, the Lord said that whatever we bind, he's in agreement. Heaven is in agreement with us. Hallelujah. And he said, whatever we lose, heaven is in agreement with us. So if it is a spirit, you can begin to bind it while the spirit is acting up. Because God's going to agree. Only God need to hear it. The spirit don't need to hear it. God need to hear it, right? So have a great, what's the day? Today is Thursday. Or is the day Friday? Friday. Today's <laughs> Today is Friday. Have a great weekend. Have a great weekend. Laugh. Uh, enjoy yourself. Be grateful, right? Choose life. <laughs>